Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stellar Shows at Jack's. This presentation of Eclectic American Roots is a showcase for the music and lifestyle that celebrates the origins and legacy of authentic American music. Please give generously early and often as we continue to present this musical series. The proceeds go to the roots musicians that you love and support through these challenging and uncertain times. This is Eclectic American Roots episode number 10, and today we highlight classic rhythm and blues with a special focus on the women of R&B. Like jazz, rhythm and blues is another genre of American music that black Americans gifted to the nation and to the world. It is a gift that has kept on giving by leading into other musical styles like soul, rock and roll, blues, and more. What is rhythm and blues? It's been described as urbane, rocking, jazz-based music with a heavy, insistent beat. Sometimes early R&B gets loosely categorized as jump blues. Purists would say that the chords and arrangements have a stronger gospel influence, but with a rhythm and tempo designed to fill the dance floor. It truly is music made for dancing because it melds elements of swing and blues, incorporating shuffle rhythm, boogie-woogie bass lines, and short horn patterns or riffs. R&B lyrics reflect the human experience, including themes like the ups and downs of romantic relationships, dealing with money troubles, and the pursuit of happiness and fun. You know, everything the pandemic has brought to us. Black culture permeates the music through its vernacular, its sense of humor, and that energizing gospel throwback, vocal call and response. It's music design with dancing in mind. While R&B was not explicitly political from the 40s through the 50s, it's had great appeal across racial divides, serving as a bond that linked American youth of all ages and ethnic backgrounds. That bond was facilitated by the DJs who played the songs on radio stations with big antennas and a long reach. The height of R&B's popularity was just before the civil rights movement really gathered momentum. Systemic racism meant that black musicians, especially the ones on tour, had to be incredibly brave and strategic in planning every logistical move to avoid run-ins with the police or racists with bad intentions, no matter where they were touring. There was a whole other set of challenges when it came to women performing R&B in this period. First, there were fewer of them. Just imagine young Dinah Washington being the only girl on her first music tour with a bus full of male musicians. Imagine being the star singer who gets fired for merely delivering a round of drinks to her band. That was Ruth Brown, who we will be paying tribute to during this show. Imagine being a waitress who gets fired for singing a song with the band. That was Irma Thomas, who became the soul queen of New Orleans. At Stellar Shows, we want to shine a light on the musical legacy of the women of R&B. They helped push the envelope with their delivery of playful, daring lyrics. They showed confidence and sass with the utmost class in their stage personas as they blazed the trail for future artists to follow. Where does R&B stand now, you may ask? You are going to see and hear interviews with some of today's female performers who are still singing those songs and are also writing new songs inspired by their predecessors. But wait, there's more. One of your favorite artists in the Roots music scene will be dropping in between segments with more songs that he's cherry-picked from among his favorite rhythm and blues singers. It's our DJ, Big Sandy, and it's a rare treat to have him in that role, so come along and hang out with him. This is no time to sit back and relax out there in Coronaville. Like the hard-working audiences at the first R&B shows in rural towns, Get your COVID-weary souls ready for some house rockin' R&B. So from the comfort of wherever you are, get ready to cut the living room rug or shimmy in your seat. Let's kick it off with Big Sandy. Well, all right. Big Sandy here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. And uh, I'm really happy to uh, have the opportunity to spend some time together focusing on the women of rhythm and blues. You know, there's been a, a lot of different styles of music that have influenced my own music over the years. But I've, I've always had a, a, a very special place in my heart for R&B, but particularly uh, the women vocalists. Um, I think more, more than a lot of the male male vocalists, just, just something about uh, 
the vocal phrasing that a lot of uh, the women singers had and, and have um, that, that really gets to me. Um, so maybe you can uh, listen for some of that over the course of uh, the next couple of hours. Uh, maybe you can pick up on some of what I'm talking about. So today um, I picked out some of my favorite R&B video clips and broken them down into four, generally into four categories. Um, starting with uh, the roots of rhythm and blues, followed by the influential ones. And then we're going to go into the solid senders and ended up with the, uh, the R&B women of today. All right, so let's get into it. So uh, we'll start with a couple of clips uh, of, uh, from some, some wonderful women uh, from that period of time, from the mid-40s, the mid to late 40s, when uh, jazz and uh, big band swing was starting to give way to uh, earthier sounds like jump blues and uh, just some of the, the more bluesy things that led to what became uh, rhythm and blues. Um, we'll start right now with a, with a group um, that was the very first uh, in integrated uh, all-female orchestra. Um, from 1946, here are the International Sweethearts of Rhythm. Check it out. Ah, Hollywood wants me, Broadway needs me, but Harlem's got me. Harlem ain't got you, I got you. I ain't got you with these, I ain't got you with those. I got you with my little, little bit of toes. <laughs>
took everybody down but me. And I was standing in the corner just as high as I could reach. They were booming in the kitchen, drunken in the hall. I'm going down to court and tell the judge about it all. Cause they raided the joint, took everybody down but me. I like that. 1946, taken from the the soundy of the same name, They Raided the Joint. Uh, that was by a uh, singer and actress, uh, Vanita Smith. Um, you know, Vanita uh, on, only recorded a couple of records uh, for the Regal label, but she left us all with a, with a wealth of uh, soundies and films that document a, a really wonderful uh, period of the pre-rhythm and blues. Uh, and then before that, we had the International Sweethearts of Rhythm, um, Fronted by the great, uh, fronted by the great Anime Winburn. Anime Winburn, don't forget that name. Uh, next up from uh, the 1948 film Boarding House, um, and performing uh, with the Lucky Millinder Orchestra, uh, we have Anastine Allen with the uh, Let It Roll. Let her know. Please for Miss Anastine Allen. Now, uh, a lot of you might know uh, the name Anastine Allen from uh, her recording of Fujiyama Mama, the original version, um, later covered, of course, by Wanda Jackson. Um, now, uh, big band jazz and, and uh, jump blues were only two of the elements that went into the formation of rhythm and blues. Uh, and here now, to demonstrate that blues element, here is the truly great Big Mama Thornton with. Hound dog. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Been snooping on the door. You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Been snooping on the door. You can wag your tail, but I ain't gonna feed you no more. You told me you was hot. Don't. You don't. 
Willie Mae Thornton, professionally known as Big Mama Thornton, with a with a song that would stay uh, on the Billboard R and B charts for seven weeks and uh, sell two million copies. Um, of course, it was um, made it into an even bigger hit by a, a, a young rhythm and blues fan from Memphis, Tennessee. We all know that. Who might that be? Mm. Okay, I'm going to go uh, freshen up my drink and. Uh, then uh, pull a few more videos out of the vaults, uh, thread the projector, and uh, and get ready for round number two. So I'll see you in a little bit. Stick around. This is fun, isn't it? Okay. See you in a bit. say we welcome our host for today's show. Abby Girl is blessed with a silky voice that the local and international roots communities have been buzzing about for years. 
Abby's been singing since she was a kid in rural Tennessee, first in a small church congregation where no musical instruments were used and all the harmonies were present. From that insular beginning, Abby fell in love with R&B and country music and kept embracing more sounds until her interests spanned much of the globe. That scope was enriched by time she spent living in East Africa and staying with relatives in Trinidad and Tobago. She possesses a broad range and can croon in a high soprano on songs like Angel Baby. She can belt it out like Laverne Baker and moan way down low like Big May Bell. Your world is not your own. You can feel it in your bones. Come on, you better leave today. Oh, Raised in the Tennessee Hills, Abby's first influences including listening to bluegrass at town fairs and exploring her Tennessee grandmother's rhythm and blues records. Abby Girl has thrilled audiences at Viva Las Vegas, Nashville Boogie, Doheny Blues Festival, Viva East, and many, many more. She has shared stages with artists like Wanda Jackson, Big Sandy and his Fly Ride Boys, Dick Dickerson, James Inveld, Los Straight Jackets, Junior Watson, Kid Ramos, and many, many more of those artists who are now her fans and her mentors. Abby recently landed a gig on the 2021 Summer Jamboree in Senegalia, Italy. The media has said that Abby Girl is blessed with an impressive voice which echoes Patsy Cline, a vintage sound that will also appeal to fans of early country music or rock and roll. Abby Girl and The Real Deal have come up with a remarkable album. From the rollick and roll of Jimmy McCracklin's Georgia Slop to the low-down growl of Etta James in the basement, it's a rich collection of R&B where Abby justifiably includes an original titled Calling Me Home. It's equal parts creative and satisfying. Watch for the release date soon of that album, Calling Me Home. Please welcome to Eclectic American Roots, Abby Girl. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome Miss Tammy Savoy. All right. Hey, Tammy, how are you? Hello, I'm good. <laughs> it's so wonderful to see you. And that beautiful uh, fixture on the wall behind you looks like you have a crown on from, oh. <laughs> from Casa de Flores. <laughs> You're familiar with Casa de Flores, right? That makes all the beautiful. Uh, <laughs> hair flowers for the stars in the scene. Well, oh, yeah. uh, I'm so happy to get to talk to you about r and because this is the music we do, right? Absolutely. You are one of the queens of r and in the, in the current scene. Um, in fact, I remember seeing one festival you were at with Shanda and with uh, Donna, Miss Donna from the High Jivers, and they billed you as the queens of R&B. What, yes. what was it like doing performing that festival and being one of three women in your your scene? That was amazing. I think what you're referring to is the Rhythm and Riot in England. It was amazing. And I also did a, um, a tribute to Ruth Brown there as well. Uh, while I was there, so that was really fun, and Shanda was a part of that as well. So it was, it was, it was a really fun experience. Fantastic. Well, I know you have been the toast of the scene uh, since you emerged fully formed uh, just a couple of short years ago. You've taken the the R and B scene by storm. Um, I have a question for you. Um, what is it about R&B music that makes it something that you want to perform live? Um, Resonate with you? Yeah, I'll just say that it's just something that I've always been passionate about. You know, something that's just been with me my whole life. You know, growing up uh, with my parents, I listened to 
so many different genres of music, and for some reason, that's that's the one that stuck, you know, right, <laughs> for me. Right. Yeah, well, so. um, I'm curious, what do fans tell you? Because I know you, there are younger fans in the scene that mm -hmm. are having to be introduced to R&B through their parents or, mm -hmm. or whatever. But um, what? And and there are people who have you know collected old records for a long time, and so when they hear someone like you who sounds so authentic and so natural in that genre, I mean, what kind of feedback have you gotten from people? Have people said anything that was interesting or noteworthy about your, the way you perform R&B? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I get, I get a lot of comments. I'm not even sure. Like, I, but, but what really, really um, is near and dear to me is when I get the uh, the sons and daughters of the actual artists that approach me, and they they tell me like how how amazing it is that I'm keeping their uh, parents' music alive um, because I I've, I've been contacted by Ruth Brown's son, um, and he he just he loves it. He's always like encouraging me to keep going, and and also um, Priscilla Bowman's daughter. Um, her name is Gail Price. She's in Kansas City, Missouri. And um, she's always like uh, saying that she loves that I'm keeping her mom's music alive. And that just makes me feel so good, you know. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. I know that you've written numbers with Chris um, that you have, that you're selling now, right? What are what are the two original, two, I know you have more than that, but yeah. what are the two that are, that are, out there in circulation, available for purchase. Oh, oh, right. So right now, um, uh, Chris he wrote uh, Big Baby, and uh, that one he actually originally wrote that, um, and Wanda Jackson <laughs> liked that song, oh. so when he wanted to use it on her album, um, but then <laughs> we released it and. And I guess it, since so many years had passed by, he didn't think that she was going to use it. So we used it, you know, for a single. And then uh, come to find out, they wanted to use it. <laughs> oh, cute. I've heard of that happening yeah. to other big artists before. Yeah, so yeah. That, was, that was kind of a funny story about that. I'm like, well, I hope that she still uses it. Like, I think she's supposed to come out with something produced by John Jett, I believe. Ah, yeah. So, so Big Baby, there's a great Botflix video with that, too. Yeah. Right? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right, that folks can see. And, um, yeah. So, what is it like working with um, Chris Casello and your bandmates when you're putting your set list together and you're deciding, <laughs> you know, what, it's what is your approach? I'll say that. <laughs> what is your approach to how you're going to do the songs? Like, so when we first started, I had like a whole list of songs that I liked and I, um, you know, approached him about it. And so what he did was he just went through and chose the ones that he was able to um, play because a lot of them, they were like big band songs. And so he had to, you know, make it so that he'd be able to play it on the guitar and everything. So. He chose the ones that he was able to play. And he also contributed to the set list as well of our few songs that he knew that he had done in the past. So that helped a whole lot too to get the set list going. Um, and the fact that he already had, a, you know, his own show, when we first started and didn't have as many songs, he would throw in some of his songs as well. Right. So yeah, but now we've, we've managed to, you know, bring more songs to the set and everything. So, but it's, it's always, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> it's really interesting. Well, I, you know, it was really um, encouraging to me to see how well received you were at Ameripolitan the year that you won. I was so happy that to be, you know, in the category with you and, and to yeah. be with you on. I, I have to share with you, I remember, um, being in the green room with all the artists 
uh -huh. and everyone was buzzing about you. And uh, oh. we're hearing Andrew Himmler from the Delta Bombers uh, talking to another guy. And he's like, oh, yeah, who are the nominees for female rockabilly this year? Oh, well, Tammy Savoy. I'm like, come on, Tammy Savoy. <laughs> was like, say no more, Tammy Savoy. She's, you know, she's destined, destined for it. <laughs> keep you uh, grounded and, and energized and hopeful for the future during these uncertain times when we're dealing, you know, with so many things, so many challenges in the world right now. What, what helps you most as an artist to stay, uh, stay grounded and optimistic about your future? I would definitely say like working on new music really does uh, help. Um, I've been learning a lot of new songs um, since I've been home and everything, and that's been helping a whole lot. And the fact that I'm here with my family and everything helps too, because we've actually been um, writing a lot of songs together. Fantastic. Um, yeah, and before I didn't have time to really do that with my family, so it's kind of good that you know we're all together and we get to help each other out. You know, so that's been. Very fun. Very fun. And, and yes. then my daughter is learning um, ukulele. She's teaching herself how to play ukulele. And she started um, the beginning of April. And she's oh. already like, she's doing so good. So, and then we write songs together. Me and my husband, we've been working together writing songs. It's been, it's been really, I mean, it's been tough like, dealing with the situation, but I'm enjoying. Um, you know, working together with them. So this one is um, I Ain't Giving Up Nothing and it's um, by Priscilla Bowman, who I mentioned in the interview. <laughs>
everybody welcome to a classic american roots on a sunday afternoon it's a beautiful day but since we're all quarantined what have you got better to do than watch a show like this and what a show it is well, i am so proud of this show you know it's such an important topic we're, we're celebrating black culture at a time when public opinion is rapidly changing so that's why we present this retrospective today. We want to help shed a, shine a light on hundreds of talented musicians who have experienced decades of discrimination and while they're simply trying to bring good music to their fans. So join us, please. Um, we have more music on this show than ever before, so stay with us. Don't forget, we have this uh, tip jar thing. It's the only way we have of paying our musicians for being on the show. And we appreciate it if you can go to stellarjacks.com and drop in a little donation. If you want to use Venmo, it's um, Jack's Hideaway, just like it sounds. Um, I'll be back a little later to tell you about some upcoming shows. But right now, we have the women of Rhythm and Blues with Big Sandy and Abby Girl. Enjoy. Old VS uh, here again with the with our second installment of Video Treasures. This time it's the influential ones. Now this next artist uh, uh, gets mentioned so many times by artists of many different genres as being a major influence, um, and rightfully so. Um, talking about Sister Rosetta Tharp, um, she was primarily a uh, a gospel shouter and guitar player, uh, but her I tell you, her celebration of the joy of life uh, that comes through in all of her music is just so moving and, and was certainly uh, an inspiration, uh, an inf a heavy influence on a lot of young r and and uh, future rock and rollers alike. So here she is with Up Above My Head, Sister Rosetta Tharp. Up above my head, I hear music in the air. Up above my head, there is music in the air. Up above my head, music in the air. And I really do believe, really do believe, joy somewhere. All in my room, music everywhere. All in my home, music in the air. Up above my head, there is music in the air.
look everywhere up above my head. I don't you know music in the air. Up above my head. Music in the air. Singing about her lean baby, the great Dinah Washington. And, and uh, Dinah was a, I guess you could say she was primarily a jazz vocalist, but she recorded some great rhythm and blues, some really dirty R&B and blues, um, some straight pop. But for me, I I can hear her vocal phrasing uh, in a lot of the early rhythm and blues singers, especially a lot of the male singers. Um, like uh, uh, Amos Milburn comes to mind. I don't know if anybody else hears that. But I do. All right. And then before that, of course, uh, with so much joy and, and rhythm in her soul, man, man, oh, man, Sister Rosetta Tharp. Okay, now this, this next artist is a, is a young woman who uh, worked as an MC at the Apollo Theater and, and later became a, a songwriter. Um, and and the, it was in songwriting that she was uh, had most of her influence uh, on, on music. Uh, she ended up working with guys like Sam Cooke and Ray Charles, uh, Bobby Blue Bland, Jimmy Reed, uh, Etta James, Jackie Wilson, uh, an impressive list of artists. Um, yet her name is not really known. Uh, so listen here, listen, listen well. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Pearl Woods. He's so living, living, living. He makes me crazy, crazy, crazy. Gosh, he's living, living, living. But he satisfies my soul. I can't eat, I can't sleep. Though he promised he'd be sweet. I can't drink, I can't think. I know I'll never, never get a make cause he's so living, living, living. He makes me Yeah. 
And that was Faye Adams with Somebody Somewhere, a song with uh, with deep gospel roots. Uh, and that makes sense uh, since uh, Faye grew up in the church and uh, started singing gospel music with her sisters at a, at a very early age. Um, then eventually was discovered by Ruth Brown, today's featured artist. Uh, then Faye went on to have a gigantic career of her own, uh, had some huge hits, uh, the biggest of which was Shake a Hand, and, and sold millions of, uh, of records uh, throughout the 50s. Um, then in the early 60s, uh, she gave up the, the R&B business, the R&B racket, um, and went back to the church, went back to gospel music uh, and family life. Um, and I'm very happy to say that uh, at the age of 97, Faye Adams is still with us, uh, living in uh, Newark, New Jersey, I believe. Um, all right, Faye Adams, thank you for your music. Um, and before that, who was that? We can't forget, Pearl Woods. All right, time for another break, friends. Uh, man, this is fun. Hope you're digging it. Uh, I'm going to get ready for the next round of uh, videos, uh, the Solid Senders. We'll see you in a bit. Thank you. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to welcome the fabulous Shanda of Shanda and the Howlers. Hi. Hey, Shanda. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Thank so, you. First off, um, where are you coming to us from, Shanda? Fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, I'm really happy to see all the success that you're enjoying and all of the touring that you've been able to do in Europe and and at all of the, the festivals. Um, so I want to ask you, um, what draws you to R&B? Why, why do you sing R&B songs? I know you do a lot of blues and you do things with a stronger blues filter over it. But um, why do you think R&B still, you know, moves you to perform it? It has to be the emotion involved. Um, R&B is very emotional music. It's very soulful. And it just, it gets my heart going. It's my outlet. It's my drug. I need it to survive in a way. So I feel things... I feel emotions intensely and the stage allows me to share those emotions with people and also let people know if they feel the same way, they're not alone. Like we all get angry. We all get sad. We all go through heartbreak. And the thing I love about the content of our music is it's kind of a punch in the face to anybody that's ever broken your heart and you get to do it without actually committing crimes. So it's a lot of fun and it's, it really soothes my soul. It is, it's, and there, you can find an R&B song for just about any stage in, in a relationship. I really like the song, Scurry Like a Rat. Uh, it's our fight song, and I feel like every band needs a good fight song. And it's from the Rhythm Riot in the UK that we played 2019. <laughs> are Laverne Baker and Ruth Brown. I really loved the old R&B. I discovered old music. My dad had an oldies tape collection that I would 
take to my room and hide away on Sundays and just listen to the platters and the Shirelles and all that doo-wop. And that just led, led me to the R&B and the ladies of R&B. Well, Laverne Baker, I'm actually really shocked there isn't a movie about her. Her story is incredible. She was actually, um, for lack of a better word, stranded in Vietnam after a USO show. Her husband in America had her declared dead and kept all the legal rights to her music and royalties. He would hang up on her when she would call collect. <laughs> And so instead of giving up, she opened a nightclub. I believe it was in Singapore. I uh, could be wrong. Uh, it could be another major city. And she ran that nightclub until I believe it was the 1980s when someone here did their research and went and found her and they brought her back here shortly uh, before she died. I've been going to Viva, I believe my first year was 2004. And I was blown away then, and it's only gotten bigger and bigger. And I've always wanted to sing for as long as I could remember. And getting quick to play Viva, I literally started screaming and jumping up and down. <laughs> so the first video we ever released was I Don't Need Your Love. And we did it with a very minimal budget. And our friend Vivian was the lead lady. And it was actually filmed at the El Cortez in downtown Las Vegas. And the concept was um, thought up by Luke. And it was my first video and it was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. It was great to be here. And I hope to see you at our performance at VLV 23.1.
At this time, I have the honor of introducing Abbey Girl's tribute to Ruth Brown, the Tony Award winning queen of R&B, who is a Rock and Roll Hall of Famer and a recipient of a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Take it away, Abby. Ruth Brown, the woman who some refer to as the queen of rhythm and blues, was born in 1928 in Portsmouth, Virginia. She was the eldest of seven children in a devout Christian family. Her father was the choir director, and her grandmother made sure she and her sisters paid their dues by sitting long hours during revival month on the moaner's bench, listening to stern deacons preaching or shouting at them, behooving them to catch the spirit and accept the Lord. Ruth and her sisters had reached their wit's end and hatched their scheme to jump up and shout with planned choreography. They thought they had the church fooled, but Grandma gave them a very stern look. They were busty. There was a fine line between the feel of gospel versus rhythm and blues. There was a song called, I Can See Everyone's Mother But Not Mine. And there was an R&B tune called, I can see everybody's baby, but I can't see mine. Ruth's mother warned her girls, if it moves your hip instead of your heart, you better watch out. Young Ruth showed more interest in singing USO shows and nightclubs than in the church choir. And by the time she was 17, she ran away from home and eloped with trumpeter Jimmy Brown. They headed out for a month-long tour with the famous Lucky Melinders Orchestra. When she got fired from the group for delivering a round of drinks to the band, she was picked up by Blanche Calloway, the sister of Cab Calloway. Blanche became her manager, and following a show with Duke Ellington, Ruth got her chance to audition for the bosses at Atlantic Records in New York. Before she could make it there, Ruth was in a car accident where her foot was badly injured. It would take a year to heal. She signed her contract with Atlantic from her hospital bed. Ruth would go on to record several hits for Atlantic. The record company acquired the nickname, The House That Ruth Built. And one of her most popular hits, Mama, He Treats Your Daughter Mean, begins with that itty-bitty headed tambourine straight out of her gospel roots. Let's have a listen and see her command of that tambourine. That I will.
Another reason Ruth Brown was so popular was her poise and elegance with her gowns and hairdos. But life on the road as a black touring musician was far from the glamor presented on stage. Ruth and her band were taking a risk when they ventured into the South on tours because of the obvious reasons of systemic racism that was carried out on black folks. There were numerous incidents of targeted harassment from the police. She had her car set afire. The band would be hauled into night court for a phony speeding violation and they would be driven out into the backwoods to a judge's house and would be told they owe a fine of a few hundred dollars to be paid immediately before they could leave town. In one famous incident, the cops stopped their caravan of cars and demanded they all play their instruments on the side of the road to prove they were legitimate musicians. Ruth describes the scene in this 1995 interview. I've had an experience, and when my book comes out, it will speak of an occasion on which we were going to Gulfport, Mississippi, Charles Brown, um, Paul Huckabuck Williams, and myself, and the police stopped us and said that we were doing like 30 miles an hour in a 25 mile zone, something like that, and made us all get out of our cars, and of course these were well, nice cars, couple of Chrysler's of things remind me, right? Anyway, what we eventually had to do was when we pulled out all the instruments to prove that they weren't stolen, we had to do a concert on the side of the road. Ruth explains that this is why she's so passionate about what she was doing. They went through so much to reach their audiences. Well, how did you, uh, when you traveled from town to town, how did you deal with the hotels or lack there of There were hotels? none most times. Lack of <laughs> hotels is what it was. What you had to do was you always left in time to get into the city where you were going to work and get there early enough to go down on what we call the main drag. You know, you'd get in town and not know just where to go. And when you'd ask instructions, usually you would, they would say to you, find the railroad track. And once you find the railroad track, cross over. <laughs> you understand? Once you get on the other side of the track, that's where you're going to be performing in that immediate area. So what you did was get down to the main street, go to the local <coughs> restaurant. The fellas would find the local barber shops. At that time, they were having the do's, you know, yeah. with the do rags and whatnot. Uh -huh. and they uh -huh. had to find somebody to comb that. Yeah. But you would get into that neighborhood and inquire of somebody most times who had a house and some extra rooms. There uh -huh. were a lot of what you call tourist homes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and you'd go and get a room there. And I can remember many times, and I've gone in, and people have like doubled their children up and took the children's, the room the children were sleeping in, to give to me and my assistant or something. And members of the band, usually there was a restaurant upstairs, they would have some rooms. Uh-huh. And that's where we would stay. I mean, we did not have the opportunity to visit the Holiday Inns. Believe me, that was not. Breaking barriers. That is what this music did. Yes, there was a segregated dance floor. And when the music generated so much joy, often the rope would fall and dancers would drift to the opposite side until someone noticed stopped the music and propped the rope back up that divided the two sides. Independent record companies like Savoy, King, Imperial, Specialty, Chess, and Atlantic marketed to black audiences, but thanks to the far reach of radio and the DJs who played the R&B hits, white audiences soon became hooked. This led to all the white artists who were eager to emulate the sound that made young people want to cut loose, dance, and make romance. When Janice Martin heard Ruth Brown for the first time, she went straight to her band and asked, why can't we do this? R&B led to rock and roll, rockabilly, and so much more. Like Ruth said, R&B music breaks all barriers. It has affected all cultures and so much music that followed. She said, this music made you want to hold somebody really close to you. 
It spoke of love, and love is continuous. That's why it's lasting. The up-tempo tunes were for dancing, and the slow drag tunes were called coffee grinding music. If the band started off with a rushed tempo, Ruth would say, where are you going? We are not in a hurry. Take your time. But, tell, tell me about some of those slower tempos. What else was going on while they wanted, oh, we the, called while it, they wanted the slower tempos? Oh, we called it, if you will excuse the expression, coffee grind and music. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I knew that's what you wanted me to say, because that's what it was. You know, we called it coffee grind and music, and I, I'm very proud to say that I sang some of that and saw a lot of that going on. Um, we said coffee grinding because it was such a personal kind of an attitude that it wanted and required and made you want to hold somebody really close to you. Here's her advice to younger singers. She says, think about the words and the melody. Make a listener believe you. The singer's job is to make that song apply to the listener. Make it believable. Look in a mirror. You can focus on someone in your audience. You can lock eyes. And eventually, she says, you will hear yourself. Thanks to Ruth Brown for putting that message across so beautifully. Her approach to music and her regard for other people are traits we should all emulate. Hey, everybody. Hope you're enjoying our live stream show today, The Women of Rockabilly Music with Big Sandy and, of course, Abby Girl. We've been doing a lot of live shows lately, too, over at Campus Jack's in Newport Beach. He's got an outdoor restaurant, like a dinner theater set up. Beautiful big stage, beautiful big menu, beautiful big sound. Hope you can make one of the shows there soon. We've got a couple coming up. Uh, Eddie Clendenning and the Blue Ribbon Boys will be there this coming Saturday, July 25. And uh, it's almost sold out. You can still get some seats. We keep it down to 48 seats. One of the things Campus Jacks does is we check your temperature. We require you to wear masks. And we put all the tables at least six feet apart. So it's a, a safe and sane environment to come and see live music. Um, a couple of weeks later, on August 7, we've got Johnny and Jaylene appearing at Campus Jack's Dinner Theater. It's going to be a fun one. Um, the cool thing about those shows is they're both on stage and online, so you can stay home and watch if you don't want to go out. Um, we recommend uh, tuning in, but be sure, while these are free shows like today's, we really appreciate any donations you can give to StellarJacks.com or Venmo at Jacks Hideaway because that is how these musicians are getting by right now. And we share it equally among everyone that appears on the show. So please take advantage of that. Um, speaking of shows, next Sunday, we have Dave Stucky and Sage Guyton for hosting a special ranch house chicken party. If you like into western swing and honky tonk and a little rockabilly in your life, you're going to love what these guys are putting together. Um, the guests are Joel Patterson, Elena James, Elana James, Rose Sinclair, and Sophia Johnson from Austin, and uh, Willie Briggs from over in the uh, across the pond. So um, if you like Moon Mullican, check out. Carl Sonny Leyland's tribute to Moon Mullican. It's going to be part of the show next Sunday at noon right here at Stellar Shows and Concerts. So um, it's time now to introduce our high roller. Uh, we've got a couple of high rollers. The first is Julie Abney. Julie has been uh, a high roller for a couple of days in a row now, and we sure appreciate that. Uh, Justin Case, 
is also one of our high rollers. So please, uh, when you check in and make a donation, the more the merrier. We really appreciate that. This is our 10th show, and I'm very proud to say that we uh, have a lot more shows coming your way in the future. We've got one coming up on Viva Las Vegas in August, and uh, a couple other surprises I think you'd be happy to see. Let's get right back to the music, though, because that's what this is all about. Thanks again for Eclectic American Roots. All right, folks, and so now I would like to present one of the most popular R&B singers in our SoCal scene right now, the lovely Miss Shannon McDonough. Am I pronouncing your last name correctly? Yay, yeah, fair. actually, the very, very well done. Um, I actually just go by Shannon Mack because my last name oh, is yes. so long and so complicated, so... Why do you, uh, why are you drawn to R&B? Why do you like performing R&B with the moon tones for <sighs> audiences? What is, why R&B and why not pure rockabilly, like Janice Mayer and rockabilly? Sure. You know, yeah. um, you know and I, I guess I never, I, I never really thought about it. I did start in Minnesota with rockabilly. I mean, I that's, that was really where I did start. And slowly, even with my band in Minnesota, it did, we did start trending more towards the R&B and the blues. And I, I've, I've always loved Etta James, of course, and, um, uh, and Ruth Brown and Me the too. Baker. Um, they just, there's oh, yeah. something about uh, the, there's just some, something about the emotion that they're able to put into the song with their voice. And I just, I guess I've just always wanted to emulate that. I, I never really thought about it before. <laughs> Thanks for yes. asking me about I think, that. I think that's the key. I is, think that's is giving the key. it some thought. Well, <laughs> this is a real treat for me to get to talk to my contemporaries, uh, other women in the scene who are doing R&B. And everybody has their own um, uh, special angle on it. I notice with your band, with the Moon Tones, uh, it really attracts a huge dancer set, although it's not only dancers, but definitely uh, the dance, the dancing set of folks really love what you guys do. Oh, thanks. Um, and that that was on purpose. Um, when I joined the band, it, it was explained to me that this is really going to be a band with the dancers in mind. And every song that was chosen was chosen for its danceability. Um, and there's there's been quite a few songs that uh, have been suggested within the group or from outside the group that um, are great songs, but it's just not quite danceable enough. So they didn't make the cut. But we, we do try to keep those right. dancers happy. We love yeah. that. It's definitely a high energy band. Got to keep it up. Jazz hands. Yeah. Um, and before I became a singer, I wanted to be an actress. Um, I grew up watching Lucille Ball, especially, um, and just loved that comedian. Um, it, yeah, I just always wanted to make people laugh. That was always something I really enjoyed doing. So that's part of why fronting a band, uh, kind of, I can, I can try to make people laugh. Sometimes it's just crickets out there, but <laughs> I try. You know, we've been friends for a couple of years now, and I enjoy following your outside projects um, on Instagram and stuff when you post. So I've seen that you are often an extra in television shows and and movies and commercials and things like that. So are you, are you um, an actress now? Are you active or what is... Correct. I'm, I, I started as a, as an actress. Um, well, I guess I, I started as a dancer before all things. I started as a dancer when I was really young, maybe four mm -hmm. or five years old. I, I got into ballet ah. um, and I did that for about 16 years. Um, and then through dance, I got into musicals where I learned, mm -hmm. okay, I kind of can sing a little bit, but I really fell in love with acting. So yeah. uh, acting was what I focused on for many, many years. Uh, but coming from Minnesota, obviously, you know, there's not a lot of opportunities in Minnesota. Um, so as I was getting older and hitting my mid-20s and thinking, oh, I'm getting so old, I'm never going to make my Hollywood dream. Um, I kind of convinced myself I was never going to get out of Minnesota. And I got a whole bunch of tattoos. Yeah. And then maybe two years after I got my sleeve, 
I ended up in LA. So unfortunately, I have a few too many tattoos now to really do acting on a serious level, unfortunately. Um, oh. But I, I did get a chance to, um, I, I registered with Central Casting, and I did get to do a lot of background work. I spent a good portion of last year doing that full time, and it, it really was fun. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a learning experience, I mean, to really learn, you know, going from these independent film sets in Minnesota, where we just kind of think this is how it's done, to being like, oh, this is how Hollywood actually does it. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was a great learning experience. Um, my biggest role to date is probably prostitute number one on the Mayans. I've seen that my one. <laughs> Yes, I think I know the choreography for that. My, <laughs> my parents were so proud. I remember the little move. Yeah, my little, little red move. dress. The little move that you had to do. Because when people are driving by, that char that type of character, you've got to catch their attention before. Mm -hmm. it, right? You have uh, one chance. <laughs> you got one chance. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> so how did your acting, how do your acting skills play into your performing of R&B? Because a lot of times these songs are really storytelling. Well, and that's, and that's exactly it. I mean, it's, I, I equate it very much so to musical theater. I put a heavy dose of that into my performance. Um, mm -hmm. And I've, I've gotten compliments more than once from people saying that it's, you know, every time they see me, even though it is generally a lot of the same songs, um, they they say something like, you know, it's just like we can see you living each song, each yeah. time you sing it. You know, it doesn't matter yeah. how many times we've heard you. Um, and I think that's so important. You have to keep the performance fresh and just keep that emotion right in front of you, um, mm -hmm. and just live out the song. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and it's, oftentimes it's there, there's and oftentimes there's a there's a an inside joke in a lot of these songs that have sort of suggestive lyrics or double entendres and uh so you're telling a story because when you look at uh videos of ruth brown and um especially laverne baker you know when she sings love me right in the morning you know she's yes. the whole face and you better <laughs> she's so you better love she me right in the morning. Oh. And, and you are such a great actress and it never comes off as shtick it's definitely you're living the character and you're putting the story across. Oh, thanks, Abby. Oh, a little bird told me that the Moontones album is finally coming out, that people can actually get, or at least the first song, the release. Tell us about that. Correct. Uh, the album is finally available uh, digitally. It's on all the digital platforms, every single one that you can think of. It's there. Um, and uh, any new platforms that pop up as well, it should just automatically be on those too. So wherever you look, you can find the Moon Tones "Rocking Across the Universe" is the name of the album. Uh, we have oh, thirteen like songs on there. As soon as, soon as you finish one, you've got to start uh, making the next one, working on the next one. It's not like we can play any shows. We might as well record, huh? Well, and you're going to make a lot of fans really happy. Oh, gosh, I hope so. I hope everybody really loves it. Um, you know, we uh, we recorded over at Atomic Swag Studios with Shorty Poole. He's such a lovely, lovely man. I loved working with him. Um, of course, we had all of our um, standard players in it that you'll see on stage with us quite a bit, myself and Bert. Uh, Bill Ungerman was lead tenor. We had Enrique and Carlos uh, on tenor as well. Alex Hernandez sat in on Barry. Oh, and of course, Lakshmi Ramirez on bass. Yes, that's my, yeah. that's my guy right there. <laughs> uh, oh, and we even had a couple of uh, guest musicians. We had Carl Sonny Leland play piano on You Better Dig It. He's oh, wow. fantastic. Yes, of course. Um, and then Lakshmi's daughter, uh, who's probably 14 now. Uh, I think last time I saw her, she's 13, but I'll bet she's 14. She was on Barry on That's All, which is one of my favorite tracks on the oh, album. I love that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but that's a wonderful album for people to have in their collections, especially if you're having a party and you want to keep people dancing, because you know that when it's the Moon Tones album, every song on there is going to be danceable. That's the whole point. Yeah. The whole point. Keep people on their toes. Okay, Miss Mac. Now, um, do you have anything that you can share with the folks at home here? Some music that uh, that we can listen to, a video you could set up for us? 
Oh, absolutely. Um, well, this one in particular is, is a song. It's a track. Um, and this is a, an original tune that I recorded with Patrick Windsor and the Black Mail House about a year ago. Um, so it was in post for a while. Um, he finally released it. But unfortunately, the release coincided with uh, the George Floyd incident and the riots. So uh, unfortunately, it kind of got buried under that, which, of course. Um, but I would love people to hear this song. I, I'm very proud of it. Um, it's called Isn't, uh, Isn't He Just Right? Samuel Wyatt was on piano. He's in Chicago. John Thomas was on tenor. He's in L.A. And then Patrick Windsor himself, he did uh, the electric guitar, acoustic guitar, alto sax, and he did the harmonies with me. Mm. He also wrote the song, uh, but I believe he sent it out to be mixed and mastered. Mm. Uh, but it, it was so fun to be on this project where all these people from all over were working on this one song. And I really, I love how it came out. Um, and we're working on another one. Uh, it's going to be a ballad. It's called Devil's Daughter. And I actually helped write the lyrics on that one. So this is going to be my first time participating in the songwriting uh, aspect of things. And that's very exciting to me. That is very exciting. Because like, like you were saying earlier with the Moontone song, usually you try to keep the songs very danceable. Yeah. So to hear that you're about to uh, put out a ballad, I, I really look forward to hearing that. Okay, so uh, which song from the new album are you going to share with us first, Miss Mac? Ooh, well, uh, why don't we start with That's All. Uh, this is an Etta James tune that I just love to sing live. And again, as I mentioned before, this is the one where we had Lila Ramirez guest on the Barry Sax. So have a listen to her. She does amazing. And I hope you love it. <laughs> So, um, uh, how about some more? Another another tune for us from the album. Hmm. You know who I really love? I really love Laverne Baker. How about you? Oh, me too. Isn't she amazing? Yes. Oh, I love her. And it took forever for us to get a Laverne Baker tune in the show. Uh, but this one's Voodoo Voodoo. And I really hope you dig it. Um, it's, it's short but sweet. Uh, so grab your dance partner. Get ready. A snake, I started crawling on the ground. Thought I was a dog, I started barking like a hound. Thought I was a coyote, hollering at the moon. Stopping and I found it like a flip of mighty goon. He's done a voodoo to do me. Oh, he done a voodoo to do me. Oh, just about as big as a guy can be. He done a voodoo, voodoo, voodoo to me. If he couldn't have me off for a sale, I wouldn't be any good to nobody else.
back to a happy memory, shall we? I think Love that's what um, a lot of people have been doing to get by these days is they're, they're looking back with gratitude at the great moments they were able to have before the shutdown. Um, now, you guys got to perform at Viva Las Vegas. What was, what was that experience like for you? Oh, it was amazing. Uh, we actually got to do two years in a row. Um, the first year we did the pre-parties, and then uh, the last year we did, we actually played the festival. Um, we were downstairs. Um, from from what I was told, you know, I was busy, of course, but from what I was told, we, we had, we were at capacity in the room, and there was a line around uh, around the bar uh, of people just waiting to get in to see us, which is, of course, every musician's dream. It's awesome. I, I seem to recall you did a couple of videos, at least, with Bob Flicks. Uh, do you have one that you can share with, uh, one of those you could share with us? Oh, heck yes, I do. We just had one come out, um, and it's us doing a fan favorite, Fools Fall in Love uh, by The Drifters. It is a cover. Um, and this, this was an adventure shooting this film. Because uh, it was going to be at 8 a.m. on Sunday of Viva Las Vegas. So it's the very last day, very early in the morning. Thank you, Chris McGee, for this beautiful Botflix film. And I hope everyone enjoys it. All right. Well, thanks so much. And hang in there, sweetheart. We will all hang in there and keep uh, oiling our machinery and sharpening our sword and get, get ready to get back out there and uh, do what we do with the people who support R&B. Yes. Roots I love R&B. you, Abby. Thanks for having me. Big Sandy back with another round of video delights. This time we are going to dip into the solid senders, starting with one of the biggest uh, R&B hit makers of the 50s, uh, Laverne Baker, uh, this time with the continuing saga of Jim Dandy. Seems like this time old Jim Dandy got married. Let's listen. <laughs> Ovation for Laverne Baker. Uh, Jim Danny done fell in love. Uh, 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 Jim Danny done fell in love. Uh, 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 Jim Danny done fell in love. Uh, 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 love Jim. 
Jim Danny, love Jim Danny. Uh -huh. Jim Danny rescued me. Uh -huh. Fell in love with her the very same day. Uh -huh. Got engaged that afternoon. Uh -huh. Left the night on his honeymoon. Uh -huh. Jim Danny got married. Uh -huh. Love Jim Danny, love Jim Danny. Uh -huh. Jim Danny gave me a kiss. Uh -huh. Fought a line with his two bare fists. Uh -huh. Swam the ocean in a suit of steel. Uh -huh. With a sign saying my love. That was Linda Hopkins with her rendition of They Raided the Joint. Now that earlier version was 1946. This one, 1956. A full ten years later and they were still raiding the joint. Now Linda uh, went on to even greater success uh, as an actress, uh, winning her first Tony Award on Broadway in uh, the early 70s. So, good job, Linda. All right. Now, by the mid-50s, uh, rhythm and blues had started to weave its way into popular culture uh, through movies and uh, TV shows. Uh, this next act uh, was featured regularly on band leader Johnny Otis's TV program. Uh, they were part of the Johnny Otis Show. Uh, let's take a look now and a listen to Marie Adams and the Three Tons of Joy. Thank you, Eddie Beal on the piano, Freddie Harmon on the tennis 
Brass Dykes and Don Johnson on the trumpet, a groovy little boogie. Right now it's Marie Adams in the Three Tons of Joy with the old favorite, Goody Goody. Hey, you met someone who set you back on your heels. You met someone and now you know how it feels. You gave her your heart too, just as I gave mine to you. You broke it in little pieces, now how do you do? Hey, you lie awake and sing the blues all night. And you think I love the barrel of dynamite. Hooray and hallelujah, you had it coming to you. Goody, goody for her. Goody, goody for her. Goody, goody for me.
and I just love that clip. Um, from the classic film Jazz on a Summer's Day, that was Big Maybell in a spectacular performance, beautifully filmed. Um, and uh, which reminds me, I should mention uh, that we got that clip and some of the other ones I've used uh, this afternoon from our friend Rockin' Vic, who's doing some great things on his Hepist of the Hep YouTube channel, uh, restoring and enhancing uh, old video clips like that. Uh, some really great stuff he's been doing. So check him out. Uh, like and subscribe. Hepist of the Hep on YouTube. All right, time for one last break. Uh, I'm going to go grab a couple more sips, and I'll be back uh, as we visit today's women of rhythm and blues. Okay. See you in a little bit, friends. Hey folks, Stellar Shows is really proud of this show today. We've we've hit on some topics, we've hit on some artists that really set the world on fire. Um, Big Sandy's doing just an excellent job with the video DJing and, and Abby Girl is a host of the most. Um, just a, one last uh, message about the tip jar. We rely on you. It's a free show, but without your donation, it's not going to put much money in the pockets of our musicians. So please take your time uh, either now or after the show and go straight to StellarJax.com or Venmo at Jack's Iowa. Thank you, folks. Back to more music. So, uh, folks, I have to I have to tell you the first time I ever went to Viva, uh, the Viva Las Vegas Rockabilly Weekend uh, in 2016. The first night I was there, I had checked into my room, went downstairs, went to Big Ed's CD booth, and everyone who goes to Viva knows who I'm talking about. He wears overalls. He has all the coolest music. So I was checking it out, and uh, my friend Steve Gleb from OC, first local to me person that I ran into and he saw me checking out all the sources of inspiration I was shopping for. And he said, Hey, there's this band you've got to check out. Um, and, uh, he said that they, uh, they're, they're one of his favorites and that it's right up my alley. Cause he knew I was starting to get into R and B. And so, uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce the front woman of the star Jays, Angela Tini. Hi, Abby. I didn't hey, know that girl. story. <laughs> I didn't well, know that story. Well, I just remembered it. I just remembered it. And he was like, you, you will love her, Abby. And sure enough, I listened to that album that had come out then. And I'm like, who is this singer who sounds so authentic with her phrasing and her tone and everything? So I'm really honored to be uh, talking with you here on this great show. Thank you. Ditto. I remember first time I heard about you was from Big Sandy. Oh. <laughs> so those are high marks all on their own because if Big Sandy's saying something nice, oh, you trust well, it. He's a he is a very generous uh, star. I mean, he, he, he really goes out of his way to try to help people who are coming up and uh, help people make connections in the he really scene. Does. So, yeah. So, um, where are you coming to us from? Are you in Seattle? I am Where in are lovely, you? I am in lovely, surprisingly sunny at the moment. I am actually sitting in front of, of a window, thus all the light, um, in Seattle, Washington. Yeah, it's sunny. Who knew? This morning it yeah. was totally gloomy. <laughs> I had no idea this was going to happen, but it, the sun came out for you, Abby. Oh, hey. And you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I love your energy. Well, let's just get right to it. I mean, this show is all about R&B and... Um, uh, I wanted to find out how you got into r and I mean, you could obviously have gone in a lot of different directions because of your, you know, you're a powerful singer and you got great stage presence. You're a good actress. It's, you know, why, why r and Why 50s, 60s r and You know, it's several things that kind of converge together at once. I like, like you said, I started with musical theater. And so I found in musical theater when I was getting cast, I would always get the either jazz or blues standard songs. So clearly that's what people were saying. Hey, your voice is suited to this. Um, mm. But around the same time that I was doing musical theater, I kind of didn't know what I was doing. 
You know, I just, ah. <laughs> I just kind of showed up and learned as I went. And really, if anything, my teacher was the Patsy Klein box set. Oh, uh, wow. It just on repeat wrote, you know, and then on top of that, all the forties girl singers that I could listen to. Fantastic. All of them. Fantastic. Which is, I think where you mentioned phrasing and I'm like, well, that's where I learned the importance of phrasing. Um, yes. Was absolutely. From the forties girl singers. Um, and then on top of that, my mom was always a really big, you know, blues fan. And, and, uh, she caught, she told me, um, first about, um, big mama Thornton and, and, uh, big Maybell. And, and I was like, I didn't know who, I mean, I knew, I remember hearing the songs, but I didn't know, couldn't put the songs to the singer at the time, right? you know? Um, and she was just always, uh, very into the blues. And, um, so it's also partially her. And then as far as the band I ended up putting together, I was, uh, um, I always attribute it to um do you know who joe miller is joe miller and her burly roughnecks she used to be in this band called oh. ranch romance in the 90s um well joe would have me get up and sing with her which as a singer you know she's so amazing i was always just floored when she'd ask me to but she told me i asked her you know how did you form the burly roughnecks after you had done ranch romance because it's kind of the same kind of different and she said you know i just wanted a band that i would want to dance to and yes. that's kind of partially why I didn't do country because a lot of country tends to be sad. And I'm, you can tell from my personality alone, that's not me. So I didn't uh -huh. really want to sing that all the well, time. Like, no. Let's get the party started. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. yeah. Something more upbeat, something I would want to dance to. That's exactly yeah. how, and Roy and I are the same way. And the Star Jays, we write all the songs with that, you know, idea. We're both dancers too. So we want people to want to dance to our music. We want to want to dance to it. So that's, right. that was really where it went, where it came from, right. all those things converging. <laughs> Roy is really the musician and I am the singer. So he is the man with plan uh, to help me arrange things. But, you know, and he, he also helps me, you know, sometimes come up with a word if I'm lost or a phrase if I, if, that he thinks is better than what I've come up with. So it's very collaborative. Right. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> How about given given the audience uh, a taste of what you do with uh, with one of your songs that is just uh, very emblematic of what, of your sound. I think I would choose the first song that I wrote with Roy um, with a specific idea in mind that was not a duet. Um, and it's called The Right Girl. And that uh, was the first single actually off of our first record. you about another aspect of R&B. I mean, what, 
How do you feel? How do you like the uh, the subject matter of a lot of R and B songs? You know, the themes that R and B that tend to come up in R and B tunes. Well, a lot of them are party numbers, which anybody can identify with, which are great. You know what I mean? And and those are always fun to write. But I have some issues with the way some things were written and some things that I just don't want to sing. For instance, there was a whole lot of my man beat me and he took my money mm. and I took him back and he's such a good man still. And in mm. today's world, not so much. And I don't really want to be advocating for that. So mm. I actually, um, and this is something that is really important to me that I have discussed with Roy. And of course, Roy's with me all the way. Um, but I told him, I just felt like he needed to hear from me. It's very important to me that when I am writing songs for the Star Jays, that they are songs that come from a woman's agency, that they ah. are from a woman being strong mm. in the songs, having an opinion in the strong mm-hmm. in the songs, because I don't want to sing something that I don't believe. Because then you all can right. tell. Yeah. You can tell if somebody doesn't believe what they're singing. So it's really important to me to write them where the woman has agency in the songs. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you're the person to deliver that for sure. Thank you. For sure. (laughs) Um, I'm curious, how did the band get its name? Oh, this is funny. Um, So so initially um, what had happened was I had a band called Angela Tini and the Troublemakers. And really what that was was just an assortment of friends who – just, you know, had a bunch of other bands or a bunch of other, you know, priorities and things going on in their lives where they couldn't like commit to a band. So it was a rotating cast. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went to do this event um, that Leon Berman puts on in Seattle called Shake Shack Rockabilly Mm -hmm. Ball, um, it was the 19th year. The 20th was the last year. Um, Mm -hmm. On the 19th year, he came up to me and and I just gotten off stage. I think I actually sang a song with Roy. He said, Uh Angela, I want you to put together a band of your own and sing whatever you want to sing next year at Viva, the 20th anniversary. And I was like, whoa, okay. So I started talking with Roy about it. And we decided that we wanted to actually form a group, an actual solid group of core members that we were all friends, all had the same ideas, all wanted to go the same route. And um, in doing so, we were like, well, let's change the name because it's not me as a front woman and then a bunch of people. It's an mm-hmm. actual band. We're all going to have a say in the band. We're all going to mm-hmm. write the songs. They're not going to be all covers. And so we we all wanted to have the same say, you know, in the band, the same mm-hmm. percentage of say. So um, we were like, so we need to come up with just a band name. And I was like, well, I'm like, what's evocative of that time that isn't already taken? And I Mm -hmm. wanted something that was, uh, I was like, well, something to do with birds, because um, I absolutely love little songbirds, like my little yeah Ooh, oh, bird, thank you. hello <laughs> up close and personal with angela teeny <laughs> I I the, bluebird. the bluebird on your shoulder the bluebird on my shoulder that is actually modeled after me a chubby little girl singer and uh. <laughs> so i wanted a, a a girl um i wanted a bird name of some sort and then i thought well maybe something atomic so we just kind of stuck them together and that was the name that i mean there were several hilarious concoctions we came up with oh but star jays we like the best cool. why don't you take a second to tell us about the al- the new album that you have coming out so we recorded the new album with the intention to release it at viva like a lot of people um and unfortunately mm-hmm. you know what happened happened and there's nothing mm-hmm. we can do about it um but it turned out to be a bit of a blessing because um we wanted to do more with what we had. And, and we were like, you know, we could tweak this a little here, fix this a little there, add a little pizzazz there um, and make it a little bit closer to what sound we're really going for. We have the time now. We have the luxury of time to do that. So that's what we've been doing. Um, And it, you know, most of it's been Roy, who's like a mad scientist um, in front of the computer um, and then running things by me and asking my opinions, because unfortunately, because of the social distancing, it's not like I can just go over and sit down and he has a little girl. Right. So we're really careful about right. it. Um, right. But so we're just we're still just listening and like remixing and, and you know, doing whatever as we go along, because we can release whenever we want. Now, I, I don't want to wait 
as long as Viva next year because I'm far too excited about the new songs to wait that yeah. long. Like Roy, Roy could probably wait that long because he's a very patient person. I'm not the most patient person. I want. <laughs> well, too that excited. passionate that energy works for you. So thank you. Good, a woman of yeah, action. Just, um, I want people to hear it. I would like more unity between the girl singers. That's what I would like because there's room for all, all right. of us to succeed okay. and we all need to lift each other up. That's what I would like to see. Number one, I'm not saying it's not there, but it can always be improved. Um, I would also like to see, and I mean, and I get it, we all start somewhere, but I would really like to see more women writing their own songs. And a lot of the times you don't see that. And oh. I just, I want them to have the courage and the, you know, feel the, that, that women want to hear women songwriters too, you know? And so I would like mm -hmm. to see more of that. Great. I know, I know some people get really nervous when you ask them to name a favorite or best. So just I'm giving you two. Someone you I've, would like to get. Okay. I've narrowed it down to two, a boy and a girl. How's that? <laughs> All right. Um, Sounds so great. So girl <laughs> is absolutely Janice Martin. Um, because right. like, like me, a white girl with a big voice who really loves R and B and wants to sing black music. And I also, I know from Robert Nashley who played with her that we would have gotten along. And so I can't imagine a more fun day than hanging out with Janice Martin. And then and um, she was inspired by Ruth Brown, right? Didn't exactly. she hear Ruth Brown? And she was like, why can't we do this? Precisely. I feel like she's my mirror image, but older. <laughs> and then oh, right. um, as far as a, as a fella, Jackie Wilson. He's just oh. my favorite. Hands down. Jackie, Jackie Wilson. Wilson. Okay. And Exciting. I probably fawn all over him, but who cares? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I really can't wait to talk to you off screen so we can dish and just go deeper about uh, mu the music no. that we love so much. Uh, but we're, we're going to be going next to a video of you performing at the uh, Summer Jamboree in Senegalia, doing a very cool song. So would you like to uh, set that up for us? Uh, and then so, we'll take it out from there. Sure. So for about seven years, I really wanted to sing this song. And in my heart of hearts, um, I didn't even want to admit to myself, but I wanted to sing this song in Italian, in Italy, in front of an Italian crowd. And I got the chance to do it thanks to Angelo Di Liberto. I have to say his name out there. And um, I got to sing this song by um, Mina, who essentially I would say is like the Janice Martin of Italy as far as rock and roll goes. Um, she's known as the Tigress. And uh, she sang this song called Tintarella di Luna. And what that actually means is moon tan. So it's about a fair girl who lives in Italy. So I know a little something about it. And the most fun part was I didn't know what to expect. The entire audience sang the song with me. And that was pretty awesome moment. That was probably my best moment on stage yet. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, here's to many more exciting moments in the world of Roots R&B. I can't wait to see what you write next, what you do next. But uh, thanks so much, my R&B sister. Thanks, Abby.
and I'm back. All right. Hope you're having a good time, friends. I know I am. It's a cool thing, hanging out with uh, all these glorious women of rhythm and blues. Um, and now we are going to focus on some of the young artists who have been carrying the torch into this modern age, um, inspired by some of the sounds we've been listening to today. Um, first off, uh, a stylish young lady uh, from Southern California who was a uh, graced the Las Vegas lounges and played prestigious private events in undisclosed locations. Uh, let's take a look and a listen to Miss Jennifer Keith. Take it away. <laughs>
Would you look at that? It's today's fabulous toast, Abby Girl, along with The Real Deal, doing a song that uh, is going to be featured on her soon-to-be-released debut LP. We're looking forward to that, Abby. Uh, and by the way, uh, isn't Abby doing a fantastic job hosting today? A round of applause for Abby Girl. That's, a, that's enough. All right. And of course, right before that, the, uh, the super fine Jennifer Keith. All right, and now this next artist um, to me is, is proof that uh, the future of rhythm and blues uh, in its various forms is, is in very good hands. Uh, let's listen to uh, Jaylene, Queen of the Teens. <laughs> Down the shelf, you're down the stars, 
sleep on by myself. Good man, good man's all I crave. done there that was billy and the kids all the way from croatia uh proving that uh the echoes of rhythm and blues are still being heard all around the world and uh like i said earlier uh the music is in very good hands now that was a, a stripped down chalet version of billy and the kids uh that they did for bop flicks i really suggest that you check out their recorded material check out uh look for their records billy and the kids uh i think you'll really dig it um and well, that's it for my part here, friends. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Abby, uh, our host for the day, uh, and, and Christopher Burkhart for having me on board for the show. Um, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Uh, I think it's really important to keep all forms of roots music alive, especially during uh, the sort of pandemic that we're all going through. Um, uh, the entertainment and the diversion is needed more than ever. Uh, so thank you for supporting the show. If you can tip, that would be fantastic. Uh, but really, we really thank you for just tuning in. Uh, you can watch this later on YouTube. Um, all right, I'm going to miss you. Uh, until next time, friends, your VJ for the day, Big Sandy, signing out. Thanks a lot. And that's our show. Thanks for joining us for the Women of R&B. And remember to please use the tip jar to show your appreciation to Abby Girl, Tammy Savoy, Shanda Cisneros, Angela Tini, and Miss Mac. Special thanks to Big Sandy for supplying the great videos and commentary today. We want you around next week for our ranch house pickin' party with Dave Stuckey and Sage Guyton hosting with Carl Sonny Leyland's tribute to Moon Mullican, the king of the hillbilly piano players. As long as you support our shows, Christopher Burkhardt's Eclectic American Roots e-broadcasts will continue. Until then, remember to stay positive. Just don't test positive.